all right welcome to game lights today we are going to be looking at very interesting stuff today we are going to be actually learning how to name our kings with ease and with strength. please don't pay attention to the music okay just focus on me now on that note actually from these two examples we can see here they actually look almost the same but they are actually in different categories so aside from this we are going to be looking at geometric isomerism after the geometric isomerism there is something we have to learn last and which is called the easy nomenclature. I know what you're thinking. The easy, it's not easy actually. It's E and C nomenclature. The same way we have cis and trans. We also have what we call easy nomenclature. Okay? So now, right now, let's just dive in quickly and look how we can actually name this compound without stress. Okay? Now, from the look of things, I told you the number one thing we should always consider when we are naming an alkene is what? The primary thing we should always consider is the double bond. We must always consider the double bond first. Okay, on that note, what do we do? We have to find the longest carbon chain. That's the second thing. In our case, we first find the longest carbon chain. But here, because of the double bond, we first recognize the double bond first before we all look for the what? The longest carbon chain. From the look of things, Counting from this side, before we get to the double bond, it will be it will be like more or farther than this from this side. So now let's count together. We have here to be what? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we know where the position of the double bond will be, the third carbon. And also we also gotten online information from this count. We've gotten that it is a total of seven carbon which means it's actually kept okay now we've gotten that it's kept we've gotten that the position of the double bond is three and also what that all for now so what else do we do obviously from the look of things these substituents are actually halogens and since they are halogens we know that the substituents are only what that only inorganic substituent there is no organic substituent but if you look at here, that was, you can see there is a mixture. I will tell you how I'm actually going to be doing that without stress. Okay, now, obviously, they are all inorganic substitutes. So, what do we then do? Remember, when we are naming these stocks, we have to name alphabetically. Okay? Since they are all um, inorganic, we name alphabetically. And from alphabetical order, what we will name first is obviously going to be bromo. Before what? Um, chloro. Before what? Iodo. So, now, how do we then name this? Very, very easy. We are just going to pick the position of the bromo. We see what? Two bromo. What next? Two bromo. Cis chloro. What again? Then five iodo. Again, what else? Five iodo. Are you following? Then now. Here is now where we are going to add our parenting 2 bromo 6 chloro 5 iodo head. We, we have added our parent name. What name do we have to add? The position of the double bond. Just keep it. Because if you say you don't name it like this, heptin, you have not, you have failed actually. You missed the most important part. The position of the double bond. Uh, the double bond. So now what do we do? We have to help what? 3, the 10 carbon. So we just have 3 what? In. Now, with it, we have actually successfully named this kind of huge compound looking so, so you know. Okay, now looking downwards, how do we actually are we going to name this thing without stress? Easy, but it's actually a little bit different from this guy, so we have to take careful steps. Now, we have to what observe the double bond, see the position of the double bond. But from the look of things, if we count from here, it's actually going to give us four carbon. If we count from this side, it will give us four carbon. So obviously, we can start from anywhere. Obviously, no, we can start from everywhere. Now, this is that I told you that in different categories. What do we do? We first put the inorganic substitute into consideration. If you watch our former video, you know we are talking about maybe. I said, when we have inorganic and organic substitute, what do we do? We first put the inorganic substitute into consideration before we put the organic substitute, which is what? Metal. Okay? We also have metal here. So what do we do? We have to name it like this. Now, because the inorganic substance comes first from this side, what do we do? We count from this side, obviously. Since that is work, we don't have to consider double bond. Now, what do we consider next? The inorganic substance. This guy, they are not equal. 
and it's only an organic that's how we will just so pick the points you have to note the points because if you if you neglect this point you will be confused but now let's shoot this guy sharp sharp okay now what do we have here okay guys um i think in in joining the church i forgot to balance the hydrogen before actually this is supposed to be okay so on that note let's let's do this sharp sharp okay now what to come from this side as i said because we we consider what the inorganic substance was before the organic substance so that let's count we have what one two three four five six seven eight oct do you know that we got two information here we got that the position of the double bond is four the number of carbon is what eight so note it let's go on now the next thing we should do is what the substituent now we found out that we have bromo to be in the second carbon we have chloro and the meter to be in the third carbon we have chloro again in the what in the fourth carbon and what again we have methyl again in the seventh carbon. So now what do we do? We first go alphabetically. So what do we do? We put it like this. We name it Luko. We'll go for the first guy here. We we'll call it two. Obviously it's two. The down one is what? Also two. Two, two. We'll put our dash. Because there are two bromo here, we we'll just put it die. Bromo. That's not all. What else? We put our dad because we want to name the next one. What else do we have here? We have what? Chloro. So since we have chloro, we now put it. The first chloro we have is three. The second one is four. So I have to put it three comma four dash di chloro. That's not all. We have meter. As I said, because there, there is a mixture of inorganic and organic substance, we consider the organic inorganic substance first. We have actually considered them first. What next is the inorganic, sorry, the organic, which we have here and here. So what do we do? The position of three and position of seven. So we now write three comma seven dash di metal. Now, this is where our parent name comes in. We know that this guy is what? Oct. Obviously, we know it's oct. Okay? And we also know it's double bond, so it's octane. But that's not all. The position of the double bond is what? 4. So it's now be 2, 2 dichromo, 3, 4 dichloro, 3, 7 dichlorothal, oct. Oct what? 4 in. Okay, so guys, easily you have been able to step by step digest this uh, organic compound, which are a little bit complex. But that's not all. Let's move into the more complex um, alkenes, which we will find interesting. All right, guys. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. Now we know this guy, but we don't know this guy. Then what do we do? Stay tuned because by the end of this class we definitely understand how these two relate to each other what is easy nomenclature we know what is attract is obviously is peculiar to what the alkenes now how does this two relate observe something here they have what identical groups like these two are identical these two are identical these two are identical these two are identical which is why now we call this what we call this we call this six. We call this what? Trans, right? We call this trans. Now, how do we not know or how do we understand what is in the is? It's very, very easy. These two have identical groups, two identical groups, but here they don't have identical groups. If you notice, look close, there's no repeated here. This one is different from this one, and this one is different from this one. It's just like that. That is how you know when it's actually easy nomenclature. But that's not all. Respectively, as easy nomenclature is towards trans and cis. Understand what I mean? I mean that. I mean what I mean here now is what? When we are naming, how do we name this thing? We name it like this. Now, how do we 
needed no which is which because I said now that easy nomenclature is the word trans and what um, trans and cis. What do I mean by that? I mean that when it's e, the structure is e. It is the word trans. And when the structure is there, it is the word six. Now, this guy is trans. How do we now know which one is actually E here? It is very, very simple. We identify what? The longest words, the longest, um, uh, what do you call it? Carbon chain. How do we now know which one is now? Obviously, this guy is definitely the longest here. So, This is how it actually is. And now we'll notice that now this guy E is an alternate side of trans. You get me? So we can use E in place of trans in this kind of structure. Then this guy here, obviously the longest carbon chain will go like this. It will obviously go like this, right? Take note of what I'm doing. If it comes to carbon, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. You get me? So this is how we notice them. Then this one that is it looks like more like six is called Z. So these two are together. These two are together. They can use they can be used in place of each other when they are not bearing identical uh, groups. Okay? So on that note, how do we then know uh, name this guy? I've made it very, very easy for us. Now let's start from what this is and trans. Let's start from this and this is what we know, okay? Now, how do we name this guy? It's very, very simple. We are not going to name it based on what? The um, archive groups. Like, some of us might start naming it like one, two. One, one, two. So, two carbons, obviously. Uh, two carbon. Uh, you will not name it like, uh, what do you call it? You name it uh, one, one liter, uh, two probiotic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Now let's just move into naming this guy. See the way we do it. First of all, you count the longest carbon chain. We follow this guy to be longer. One, two, three, four. It's too long. One, two, three. This is shorter. So the so the what? The position of the double bond is where in the third carbon, obviously. So we now count how many how many are there all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's eight. So how do we now name this guy? We name it what? Because it's six, we'll put the name first. Six and position of the carbon is what? Very in. This is how to name this term. It's very, very easy. Same thing here, but this guy is trans. So first of all, we put, we put the parent structure on the trans ones. We don't know yet. So we now which one is closer? Obviously, none of them is closer. So we can count from anywhere. So count from anywhere, we know that one, two, three, four is in the fourth carbon, right? And total of everything is what? The double bond is in the fourth carbon. So total of everything is now what? Eight. So if it's eight, we're not going to be like this. Trans, alt, four, in. Trans, alt, four, in. Okay? Trans, of uh, trans, alt. For him. This is how we are going to name this guy. Now, on this note, let's move back to easy nomenclature. This guy is also easy. Very, very easy at that. So now, how do we name this guy? It's very easy. First of all, we know that this guy that is actually like trans represents uh, he represents trans in this kind of structure when they have different groups. So we now first of all we put the parents name. E words. After putting the E, how do we now name this guy? Obviously, this is our longest carbon chain. So every other thing is what? Stop to 20. So we now know that this guy is the stop to 20 here. Okay? This guy, then, yeah, I don't, we don't recognize stop to 10 like that. But here we recognize the stop to 10 after getting the longest carbon chain. So we now have this to be eta. All of us know that now. Uh, this is eta, right? Okay? So now, how do we now know? What to do here? We we'll first move for the longest carbon chain. We have this to be one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hence, now the position of the double bond is what two. 
the position of the uh, substituent is what? 3. So how do we name this guy? We name him what? E3 it's it that what? Because the total number of carbons here is what? 7. So E3 it what? And and what? Position of the double bond. And two what? In. This is how I actually going to name this guy. It's very, very easy. You recognize the substitute after getting the longest carbon chain. After that, you use the parent's name and the position of the double bond. And that's all. Okay? So now let's look at what? Say uh, C. Let's look at C, which is also what? Alternate to what? Um, this guy. Uh, six. E is alternate to trans, C is alternate to what? 6. So now let's look at it here. What do we do? We first put our C as the parent name. What else? We identify the longest carbon chain. We've done that already. So what do we do? We count. Which side do we count? Obviously, it should be from this side. This side is closer to the um, double bond. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the double bond is in the position of 4. 5 is the position of what? The substituent. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's none. So what do we then do now? It's very easy. We first put the substitution. C, 5 what? 5 beta. The substitution is what? Beta. We go to the substitution. What else do we then do? Is the what? Parent. And that is the number of carbon. The parents. We've counted and we know this to be one none. So we put our non. But that's not all. The position of the double bond in the carbon is what? 4. So non what? 4 in. So guys, don't be confused. This is very, very easy. So with this now, I believe we understand how cis and trans is related to what? Easy nomenclature. So guys, I hope you understand. Thank you for watching. Make sure you check your schedule, okay?